our members face the prospect of losing a lot of money in the run up to Christmas. This is about them fighting for the future of their industry, of our industry and of the great British post office, in particular on the high street. Mark our words, they are going to announce further high street closures early in January. We're not fighting just for the Crown offices, we're fighting for the whole of the post office network because without a revenue generating Crown office network, then the sub post offices come under pressure as well. The government announced a few weeks back a consultation on the very future of the post office. And we're delivering here today over 70,000 individually signed postcards that have been collected from members of the public with their addresses written on it all in the last couple of weekends since this dispute was announced. I have already in Parliament put down several written questions which were marked day ones, which means they should have got back to me last week. They haven't done so. Dave Wall, the General Secretary, and I intervened uh, to put terms of reference on talks which would enable everybody to set back for January and February and have some proper negotiations, including us suspending this action this week, and quite frankly the door was slammed in our face. Not just slammed in our face, they also come back and the, the post office and told us that the future closures or franchising was non-negotiable and the closure of our defined benefit scheme, pension scheme for our members, and if it closes, whatever takes its place is also non-negotiable. And that's, I mean, it's just, it's just unacceptable when you're, you're desperately trying to talk to people. It's a shame we have to go to these lengths to try and get in the room to have a proper strategic conversation and negotiation with the employer. Isn't it about time in Britain today that we had a proper debate about how you grow and how you support industries and keep, instead of keep paying highly overpaid executives who never grow anything, who only ever manage the decline of industries, somehow being able to spin it that they're successful. The Post Office and Royal Mail should never have been split in the first place. The retail and the delivery arm, in every successful postal administration around the world, those two have been kept together and they've introduced new services to replace things like the decline in letters, increased parcels, technology coming in. So they've introduced banking service, financial services. You can introduce a post bank. It's successful in France, made over a billion pounds last year. Our idea of a post bank on the high street could be on the basis of supporting affordable housing projects, it could be on the basis of growing and developing small businesses, it would end financial exclusion in this country for millions of people who can't get access to banking services, a people's post bank could provide that. We used to have the National Gyro Bank, which was then privatised in 1990 by the, uh, the then Thatcher government. But that was a really successful bank, arguably shook up the banking system. So I think a lot of people would respond to that. It's really something worth doing and it would enable us to keep all of the outlets that we've currently got for the post office, all the rural ones, all the small market towns. If they don't introduce new revenue streams, then surely those will just disappear. You put the pinch on them, sub postmasters will start handing back the keys because there's nothing in it for them and there's a lot of concern out there at the moment. I've got rural areas that the post office is a lifeline to. I know I've got deprived areas where there's low car ownership where there are many reliance on benefits who would not be able to actually live their lives properly without the post office. It's an ideal opportunity for the post office to rejuvenate itself and introduce new products and services, thereby increasing its revenues and thereby reducing the need for any subsidy from the government. When they talk about they're not really closing them, they're only franchising them, what does that really mean? It means you get rid of good quality members of staff who have got decent jobs and you put it in the back of some other business where that is not what it's mainly there for, not as good access for disabled people, not the full range of services and you replace good quality jobs with minimum wage jobs and I say that model in itself which is really the privatisation 
of the post office is exactly what's wrong in this country today. 500 years of Royal Mail this year. I went to an event, Prince Charles himself said the post office and Royal Mail, national treasures. Well, they will be buried treasures unless people stand up and defend that service, and that's what we're doing. The post office is a case study in everything that's wrong in the world of work. And we're here to change it, and we're here to say to the public, get behind this campaign. We ain't going nowhere. We're going to fight for a different future and a sustainable future for the post offices, our members, their jobs and our members' pensions. We're now going to deliver these thousands of postcards to the government minister. Let's get in there and do our deliveries.